All right. Sitting back down. It took 47 minutes to reread five pages, but that's because I ramble on. I'm going to load up uh, the next essay. Hold on. And yes, Lynn, uh, thank you for like uh, loving the um, the the uh, slideshow. I'm gonna be right back. A uh, similar kind of slideshow of the uh, screen pictures and another notification. Sorry about that. Um, uh, for my starting soon uh, screen. So, gonna transition back over. Uh, oh, it's pirate hat. Forgot about it. <clears throat> yes, I am a man of many hats. That probably can be like a donation incentive. And like, hey, oh yes, if you notice the donation uh, incentive, I'll just go like exclamation point, my friend Joanna. Um, it, it basically is like my friend Joanna, who I've known for like uh, three years. We befriended instantly over like the love of like Revolution Girl Utena. Yes, that's the true story. I believe I told that to dude snaps actually. Uh... But she's been, like, oh, she's disabled and, like, and ha it only gets, like, $1,300 a month from SSDI for two people, her and her son. And so, yeah, she just, like, bakes online in order to, like, live uh, fully. So, there's the link to her latest baking bowl on Tumblr. Um, I already gave her $100, which is why donation bar is as it is. Uh, I put, I put in, like, in, like, November 1st, but it's really whenever, like, uh, people can give her money as it were. Some people you know, do give her money so there's the per PayPal link so you can give directly to her. Uh, if you give money to me, it will affect the donation bar. But um, it's, it, I would just like, give it directly to like uh, Joanna, my friend. Uh, so that's why this is a charity uh, thing. It's just for my friend. Because uh, that's why I'm a communist, as it were. Because like, I know so many people that are like either A, disabled or like, be in poverty. And I think uh, that like, it's a system that's just, like, terrible as doing that. Now, many people that will suggest of like changing the system to work will do so through reform. And so, here we're going to like uh, read Eric Matt Tesla's uh, reformism. Uh, I'll also give you the link of the essay itself so you can like read them wrong in case maybe my Overdrive uh, app uh, has listed some things or cut some things off. So. Ergo Matt is um, one of the authors who's like, I like a lot of his writings, actually, because I have read um, uh, At the Cafe, uh, read his, some of his other, like, uh, essays, like Anarchist Programs in Anarchy, or, like, listen to audiobooks of it, and, yeah, the Italian mm, anarchist uh, thinker, uh, and actually... Uh, an anarcho pack argues that like yes the conquest of bread is great it's good to like read that it's like a great book and all but for a proper introduction to like an anarchist and that's kind of better for the modern sense as were would be Eric Matisco's anarchy or the anarchist program so it's like they not that there should be a hierarchy of anarchist thinkers come on we're anarchists um but that's kind of an interesting idea uh but anyway Eric, um, uh, but thank you everyone for coming and hey, uh, it's another notification, sorry. And see, so and Lin Woo, thank you for loving my uh slideshow and little shout out to Lin Woo because, like, the last night I saw her um playing Queen Maker making the matriarchy. At she's playing, she was playing, a, they were playing a all female um uh crew of Pathfinder uh, Kingmaker, so that was a lot of fun to watch that. And of course, my friend uh, Paige Groundhog is in the chat as well, so we'll shout out Groundhog too. <laughs> and <I> just... <laughs> um, the, the, the definite hierarchy of anarchist figures curated by Summer and Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll battle with other anarchists over their curation of like anarchist thinking. It's just, it, I mean, yeah, I mean, when you think about it, no, Kapokin's better, no, Toy Story's better. <laughs> and hey, beloved sparrows, I've been catching a lot of uh, beloved sp sparrows on stream. Uh, so check out beloved sparrows, and I shouted that page, uh, and 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 then also shout out a uh, dude snaps. The so dude snaps I can think st still currently reading uh, the color of Jack Ben. That didn't work for some reason. Maybe too many uh, times as it were. But dude, go, go ahead and shout out your uh, channel <laughs> um, when it allows to. 
Uh, uh, but yes, I'm gonna now continue. Uh, thank you everyone for like coming. It's so cool to get like a lot of people uh, watching me as I read out loud Erica Matesta's reformism. Because yes, I do have definitely have my opinions about reformism. And uh, so this was, was what, this was written in the 1920s. I want to say around that time. That's when Erica Matesta was writing things. Let's see, no, nope, okay, that doesn't have like any further information. Uh, let's see that. Uh, let's see that. So, I'm checking. Okay, string strength is good, so everyone's enjoying it. All right. The fundamental errors of the reformists is that of dreaming of solidarity. A sincere collaboration between masters and servants, between uh, proprietors and workers, which even if it might have existed here and there in periods of profound unconsciousness of the masses of the in ingenious faith in religion and rewards is utterly impossible today. Those who envision a society of well-stuffed pigs which walled uh, contemporary under the rule of a small number of swine herds who do not take into account the need for freedom and the sentiment of human dignity, who really believe in the God that orders. For his abstruse, abstruse ends, the poor to be submissive and the rich to be good and charitable can also imagine and inspire to a technical organization a production which assures, assures abundance to all and is at the same time materially advantageous to both the bosses and the workers. But in reality, social peace, based on abundance for all, will remain a dream. So as long as society is divided into... Yeah, I agree. Vote if you want it. So long as society is divided into antagonistic classes, that is, employers and employees, and there will never be peace nor abundance. Yeah, so long as that, like, the hierarchy structure of capitalists is always sitting around workers, even under the most polite and gracious bosses will still have power over their workers, as it were. The whole idea is not like, we are a family. It's really kind of not always that true because like you don't instantly fire a family members because there's like no budget in the in the like family i don't know maybe it does happen i know there are some horrible families out there actually so it's like uh hopefully but family is what you make of it but still i guess that's why hey, hey we are like in family at like uh, most places is what they make of it they will instantly fire people let go people and like kick them out uh, just like drop of the hat for whatever reason as it were that's why unions anyway uh the antagonism is spiritual with the material there will never be a sincere understanding between bosses and workers for the better exploitation of the forces of nature in the interest of all secure always more power at the expense of the workers as well as by competition with other bosses whereas the workers have mm, excuse me where the workers have had their fill of bosses and do not want more yeah even though the great and gracious bosses that like do give all their employees the all the benefits and pay them quite well those uh, businesses uh, might uh, go under if, like, a bigger uh, firm uh, it beats them out of competition because they undercut all their employments and all their, and all their labor costs as well. Our good friends are wasting their times when they fail, when they tell us that a little freedom is better than a brutal and unbridled tyranny. That and a responsible working day, a wage that allows people to live better than animals, oh, species isn't there, but don't we, uh, and protection of women and children are preferable to the exploitation of human labor to the point of human exhaustion. Or that the state school, bad as it is, is always better from the point of view of the children's moral development than schools run by priests and monks. For we are in a complete agreement. Hmm. 
Uh, we also, uh, uh, and we also agree that there may be circumstances in which ele the election results, national or local, can have good or bad consequences, and that this vote might be determined by the anarchist vote if the strength of the rival parties are equally balanced. Mm -hmm. In most cases, it is an illusion. When elections are to to uh, tolerably free, the only value they have in is symbolic. They indicate that the states of public opinion, which would have imposed itself by more erroneous means and which more far-reaching results if it had not been offered the outlet of elections. But no matter, even some minor advances were the direct result of an electoral victory, anarchists should not flock to the polling, uh, polling booths or uh, cease to preach. Uh, cease to preach. Since no one can do everything in this world, one must choose one's own line of conduct. It's kind of interesting. How I thought there was like start a new paragraph there. You have to continue on, and that's the capital S in the sense. Hmm. Uh, this app's gonna be a little weird. Anyway. Uh, there is always an element of contradiction between minor improvements, the satisfaction of immediate need, and the struggle for society, which is really better than the existing one. Uh, those who want to devote themselves to the erection of uh, public uh, lavatories and drinking fountains, or there is a need for them, or who uses their energies for the constructions of a road, or the establishment of a municipal school, or for the passing of some minor law to protect workers, or to get rid of the brutal policemen, do well. Perhaps to use ballot paper in favor of this, or that influence personages. But then... Since if one wants to be practical, uh, not a notification, I apologize, uh, one must go the whole hog. So, it, yeah, I clicked on notification, so I was like, I uh, opened up the thing, so I got a little distracted there. All good, though. Uh, whole hog. So, Rather than wait for the victory of the opposition party, rather than vote for the more kinder party, it is worth taking a shortcut and support the dominant party and serve the government already in office, and become the agent of the perfect or the, the prefect or the mayor. And in fact, the neo converts will have in mind did not, in fact, propose voting for the most progressive party, but for the one that has a greater chance of being elected. Like, it, but in that case, where does it all end? Again, this whole electability thing has a word. This is why we got to like vote for the ones that are most likely to be electable, and thus closer to the center, not to the far left, and. And oh well, you have to vote for the, the one that isn't the fascist. Then you have to vote for the lesser of two evils. Then it means we're always going to get the evil. Then pumpkins like kind of like know that, so they'll just go further right, further right, further right, and that's my cheat and like steal elections in order to still remain in office. Um, and then and the Democrats will follow suit. That's work. Yeah, and. It, Enrico Lantesco was saying this in like a well in the like beginning of the 20th century, and so it's kind of like the more things change, the more to stay the same, huh? <clears throat> but it's kind of like it's kind of pointing forward that like yeah, even back then people were kind of kind of putting forth of like if you want to do the most good, you got to like elect the people that are most likely to be elected to that supposedly are to like bring over to this current side as were. So, I'll continue. In the course of human history, it is generally the case that the malcontents, the oppressed, and the rebels, before being able to uh, being able to institutions, uh, restrict their demands to practical changes, to concessions by the rulers, and to the improvements. Mm -hmm. In order to get things done, you gotta be able to like make it more appealing to those that rule over you. Um, hopes of attaining reforms as well as in their effect efficiencies precedes the convictions that in order to destroy the power of a government or of a class, it is necessary to deny the reasons for that power, and therefore to make a revolution. 
Uh, in the order of things, reforms are the then introduced as or they are not. And once introduced, either consolidate the existing regime or undermine it, assist the effort of revolutions or hamper it, and benefit it or harm progress in general, depending on their specific character, uh, characteristics, the spirit in which they have been granted, and above all, the spirit in which they are asked for, claimed, or seized by the people. Yeah, it's kind of like the performance and the participation in the election is just like, it's what the rulers want so they can like seem like, hey, we're listening to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, we're listening to you. But yet it's not never fully what we want because we have to like sacrifice in order for practice and or practical change and to compromise our positions, as it were. And so that's why it's kind of like, um... Reform is harm reduction is certainly good. Not, reform itself is good because if we can like uh, get like cannabis to be like fully legal as it were, um, be able to like make significant changes uh, to like how things would work, um, uh, like reforming uh, the electoral process in like a, the United Corporations Imperialism so that uh, there's ranked choice voting as it were, or there's like we finally got money out of it, like a uh, uh, politics as were yes it, they are good and they'll make change but they're not the full thing as it were which is why there's limits to voting as as what the uh, erico is uh, like arguing i think <clears throat> governance and the privileged classes are naturally always guided by instincts and self-preservation of consolidations and the development of their powers and privileges and when they uh, consent to reforms it is either because they consider that they will you know, seize their ends or because they do not feel strong enough to resist and give in fearing what might otherwise be a worse alternative the oppressed either ask for and welcome improvements as a benefit graciously conceded recognizes the legitimacy of the power of which is over them and to, and so do more harm than good by process of emancipation or instead they demand and impose improvements by their actions and welcome them as partial victories over the class enemy using them as a spur to greater achievement, and thus they are a valid help and a participation to the total overthrow of privileges that is for the revolution. A point is reached when the demands of the dominant class cannot be acceded to by the ruling class without compromising their power. Then the violent uh, conflict inevitably occurs. Um... Again, not advocating anything uh, that will break to us, and because this uh, talk about the video game, read my rules. No un uncoded uh, uh, read rules. Uh, Star Trek Revelation forty six A. No uncoded messages over open channels. I'm just reading a piece of literature uh, written by a anarchist thinker from the twentieth uh, century. Uh, but that's why, in my mind at least, theoretically. If there is going to be a revolution, or in order to overthrow, say, the government, as it were, or to bring down, dismantle the state, or dismantle capitalism, finally, as it were, I do think that at least the threat of it, of some kind of like violence, has to be there, as it were. Again, not advocating anything in the video game. This is all in a video game in Minecraft. Uh, but I do think that that sort of thing has to, uh, it has to be something like that because the powerful are not going to give up their power, pure and simple. It was true then, still true now. Phew. Did the kings give up their power? Not without the threat of violence. I mean, if it has happened, okay, point me in the direction of a time when powerful people willingly gave up their power without um, the, the need of violence. Um, because, and then point me to like other times where like the opposite happened. No, they never gave up the power and always oppressed the people who were trying to like overthrow them as work. Because I've, I've seen that happen time and time again. Whenever a president in, and whenever a country in Latin America elected like a socialist president, <laughs> give it time, America will back a coup. 
Dude, congratulations to like people of Bolivia though for like the mass party like winning an election in a landslide like by 25 points or 20 points. Yes, that's great for ever Morales' uh, party, especially at the military coup last year that happened to them. Fingers crossed though that America doesn't get involved again, even if Biden wins. <sighs> I, I, I not, I, I'm, I'm not naive to think that, oh, there would never be a military coup under Biden's administration. Huh. Anyway, um, so back to the essay. It is not true to say, therefore, that the revolutionaries are systematically opposed to improvements to reforms. I, I, I'm saying I'm not. I just argued that, like, reforms themselves is good. It's reform is in itself that uh, Eric Lamentessa is uh, arguing against. Uh, they oppose the reformists on one hand because their methods are less effective for securing reforms from governments and employers, who only give in through fear, and on the other hand because of very often the reforms they prefer are those which not only bring doubtful immediate benefits, but also serve to consolidate the existing regime and to give the workers a vested interest in its continued existence. Yeah, um, I think that was kind of like they made in the case of that voting is just like you're at least in some regard saying that, like, yes, this current system is fine to be here for as it is. The best arguments right now uh, to vote for Biden is a to show that like the policies of Trump is unpopular to show how the popular the policies of Biden is. And it's because of limited like options. And that's is only Biden's the other option. Um uh, but you still at least agree that, like, yes, we want Biden as president. That's where it's only because the alternative is terrible. So the, the act of like participating in reform and like in, and then, like a voting, in a sense, does have that. So uh, yes, all anarchists basically live in cognitive dissonance. That's where, uh, especially since many of us are workers and work for a boss that like we all hate or wish to overthrow. We all live in cognitive dissonance. How can you be a critical of society yet participate in society? How can you hate capitalism when you have a smartphone? Wow. Anyway. Uh, thus, for instance, uh, state, uh, state pensions and insurance schemes, as well as like profit sharing schemes in agriculture and industrial enterprise. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of like how your retirement is tied to your 401k instead of pensions. Which, <laughs> yeah, we have pensions. So you can work to a certain point, and then at a certain point be able to retire and have a comfortable enough mind. Now, they're in 401ks. So you have to be invested in the stock market, which, look how good it is. That's how great the country is. And because then, oh, if the stock market is going down, then you're, that'd be bad for your 401k. It's kind of like a, a way of making us invested into like the system, uh, forcing us to invest in the system, and though we're just like uh, against that. But then again, that's when you finally realize that, oh, wait, this kind of thing doesn't like work when you become a socialist and anarchist and stop being a liberal, as for. Anyway, um, apart from the unpleasantness of the word, which has been abused and discredited by politicians, anarchism has been and never can be, and can never be anything but reformists. Hmm. We prefer to say reformative in order to avoid any possible confusion with those small and often ephemeral improvements to make the uh, present system more bearable. Yeah, voting is harm reduction, as it were, and as a result, help to consolidate it. Yeah, yeah, that's, the trend has been for the past 40 years, definitely. Neoliberalism was just classic consolidation. It's, it's, we sort of like voted for the politicians that like put it in that place as were even even Richard Nixon got voted into office um or who insisted in the belief in, or who in instead believe in good faith that it is possible to eliminate the existing evils social evils by recognizing and respecting in practice if not in theory the basic political and economic institutions which are not the case of as well as the prop that supports these evils. But in any case, it's always a question of reforms. And in the essential differences lies in the kind of reforms one wants and the one eh, and the way one thinks of being able to achieve it. Revolution means, in the historical sense of the word, the radical reform of institutions achieved rapidly by the violence insurgents of people against existing powers and privileges. 
And we are revolutionaries and insurrectionists because we do not want to improve the existing, existing institutions, but to destroy them completely, abolishing every form of domination by man over man and every kind of partisan parasitism on human labor. And because we want to achieve this as quickly as possible, and because we believe that the institutions born out of violence and are maintained by violence will not give us way to exert a equivalent violence. But the revolution cannot be made just when one likes. And should we remain inactive, waiting for the situation to mature with time? So yeah, yeah, the, the, the Erica pretty much laid out how I personally feel. It's just like uh, if voting in the way does like give uh, permission to the system to continue existing as it is, even though I'm against it, and so that's why. Reformism itself will not fix the system. As I said repeatedly, we cannot vote away capitalism. We cannot vote away the state. There are voting is harm reduction, and so voting is limited. And that's why, if I say yeah, go vote, it's only to continue surviving. It's not because it's for the revolution. It's not because it will prove, it will imp actually greatly improve things. It only a it, it's oh uh, my. My sibling-in-law, my older brother's partner, said it best. Voting is a tourniquet. Yes, it will stop the bleeding. But if you use only that, you will end up losing the limb. So voting is a tourniquet. That's a good way to put it. So even after... This all continue. Even after a successful insurrection, could we... A, could we overnight realize our desires and pass a uh, form of government and capitalist uh, freedom of man within the wishes of the community of interest uh, with all men? These are illusions which can like take root amongst authorities uh, who look upon the masses as the raw material which those who have power can, by decrees, support by bullets and handcuffs, mold to their will. But these illusions have not been like taken among anarchists. We need the people's consent, uh, cons uh, consensus, and therefore we must participate by means of propaganda and example. We must educate and seek to change the environment in such a way that this education might reach a ever increasing number of people. So yeah, um, yeah, I don't. I do think things like it's important to by examples work, which is why um, there's like mutually disaster relief as work. There's like, and it's like, it it said people like the the, the the if I was stereotypes the liberal response to like homelessness, you go to the city council member with a proposal or something like that, how they approve things, suggest that they approve things, write the strongly worded letter to your representatives or like a, a whatever, email them, call them, tell them that you gotta like fix the problem and feed the homeless people and maybe they'll put together like a, a, a team to like study this problem of homelessness and give them some results and like spend some time, how effective it would be, how much tax and money will it cost, blah 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 and do this whole process and in six months we spend a lot of time to think about how to deal with the homeless uh, population and or feeding the homeless when an anarchist would actually go with food not bombs <clears throat> yeah yeah good uh, yeah good luck to getting rid of all the police that way yeah if you want yeah that's what's happening right now with the uprising as it were uh, honestly uh, uh, the police just being called out essentially for their like uh, actions and uh, we demanding um, justice as were they're reacting violently to us so even if we're non-violent if we are a threat to the system the system will fight back with violence um, it, which many of uh, my anarchist buddies are like a narco pacifist and would encourage this like um, feeding the homeless sort of thing directly as were which actually, in some cities, I think Atlanta, Georgia, or no, it was St. Louis, Missouri. Anyway, there was a city that did actually make it illegal to feed the homeless people. And many times I did that too. So, um, yeah, so yeah, I hope that like, maybe we can reform and change that or vote and change that. But I would actually do the direct action sort of thing. It's just like, instead of just like, say, say, say to the representatives you help feed the homeless you feed the homeless yourselves food not bombs so it's not an organization that kind of does that
Yeah, I don't know where the religious uh, liberty uh, people are against that. Yeah, I, I, it's it's weird. Yeah, it, it, right, right. In this country, in the non corporations imperialism is a very like a Christian country, even though it's a secular state, and yet they're kind of ignoring the teachings of the of Jesus and not feed the poor instead of feeding the poor. Some people do so. Um. <sighs> But just remember that the evangelical fundamentalist uh, Christians here in America do not represent all of Christianity. Um, if I have my problems with religious, not the, it's all the concept of religion itself, more or less the institutions. Kind of like, I'm not I have problems with any Catholics. My parents are Catholics, actually. Many family members are Catholics. I know many cool people that are Catholics and Protestants and many other things. I, if, if I have a problem with Catholicism, it's the organization of the Catholic Church, for example. Where was I? Okay, yeah, yeah, and we were here. But we are, we are reformers today in so far as we seek to correct the most favorable conditions and as a large body of enlightened militants so that a insurrection by the people would be brought to a satisfactory conclusion. We shall be reformers tomorrow after a triumphant insurrection and the achievement of freedom in that we will seek with all the means that freedom permits, that is, by propaganda example and even violent resistance against anyone who shall wish to restrict our freedom in order to like win over or to our ideas as an ever greater number of people mm. but we will never recognize the institutions we will take or win all possible reforms with the same spirit that one tears and tears occupies territory from the enemy's grasp in order to go on advancing. And we will always remain enemies of every government, whether it be that of the monarchy today, of the republic, or Bolshevik governments of tomorrow. Uh -huh. And that is the end of uh, Reformism by Eric Manatesta. Uh, I think this was like um, read by Audible Anarchists. If you don't know that, like a YouTube channel, Audible Anarchists, um, absolutely a great uh, and channel because I know that like many people don't like uh, reading theory um, for many different reasons, and then some of that is because uh, people have difficulty like reading theory. It's very dry. I I just told you that like in, in in the first essay, I still kind of do. I have a headache, and it's like so it was kind of difficult to like process sort of thing. I was familiar with Eric Manteska's uh, writings and of this uh, essay itself, and so I. I was felt confident to be able to relay what it means or in like uh, bring up my own interpretations of it. So there's the uh, YouTube channel Audible Anarchist has a lot of great like audio books and pretty good audio, audio readings of the myriad different things. And I think they do have a Eric Matt Tesla's um, uh, reformism. I just read out. And I think it's a pretty good uh, uh, essay as were well. because it's kind of like we're not saying we're t yeah, they did do reformers in four months ago. Okay. Because we're not they're not saying that they're totally against um, reforms as themselves because they can do some good things. And in fact, in this like one of those last paragraphs, they said that like it, it uh, we can it will help people. It's all about survival, which is the strongest argument to vote against. Like the vote for Biden is a vote against Trump, and it's all for survival. We will survive better again under a Biden presidency as opposed to Trump presidency. We will survive better. Um, uh, if we can in, kick out the fastest in chief right now. Uh, and so that is an argument to like voting. However, I'm not going to like shame people for not voting for Biden. And in fact, I vote for Hallie Hawkins because my vote doesn't really matter in, in Super Bowl State, Washington State, because all the 11 electors are most likely going to go to Biden, unless some of them decide not to vote for Biden, as that happened in 2016 when four of them did not vote. Uh, so. Just gonna like a uh, switch over to here hello and i'm only going for like an hour and 25 minutes i uh, so i feel comfortable to uh just load up the next uh essay again by eric Lama tesla uh along the same lines of that one i just read about performance and it's instead about gradualism and i think uh, i want to like load up uh, i'm trying to remember how 
<laughs> I, I was trying to remember best of how my uh, friend and comrade, um, yeah, they, they, they seem to kind of are because, like, that way it gives them nothing. Well, also for these uh, live streams, um, also my plan for this because uh, I do have a YouTube channel, uh, it's YouTube. And so what I plan to do um, is to like basically break up these streams, like edit them down, by breaking them up into like three different sections. For my VODs of like reading uh, direct action, I just like put up the whole VOD straight to like YouTube. But like here, I'm going to actually like cut up this uh, stream so that uh, it starts with me reading vote the case against voting, and then I the in the separate VOD it will be the case uh Aramaic test of performance, and then the next one will be like our kind of test says um. Um, mm, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Tavi. <laughs> Shouting out, uh, Tavi the Wolfus. How you doing? I uh, hope everything is okay. Um, oh, you got like Uh, and, and, okay, since you mentioned the hat, and I'm in the chat, and it's just chatting scene. I, part of the reason I got this hat is a to add the collection of hats, and in case I want to be like a buyer or something like that, I do have actually like a friends that do that are pirates. As in, that's in just like there are people at first, there are people who are pirates and like uh, playing as uh, pirates and dig the kind of like culture or something like that. We'll watch the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and the, the later ones are not that good. Um, and also best stream currently in the politics category. That's why I decided to be in the politics in the category. Uh, yes, R. Uh, but the thing about, like, about this like hat, not only is like, it, it was uh, just a lot, uh, but it's nice and cool and the pirate. And this was actually fitted for me for my head because uh, as the guy who makes the hats would like, there will be like much more of a, a cone in here. So then he would just like shave it down, shave it down so that it will fit perfectly on my head and that's it'll be customizable. I guess it would fit on other people's like heads, but it was fit for my head. But this is what sold the hat for me. Multifunction. It's now a rain hat. And I live in Seattle or I live in the Seattle area with 158 uh, 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 rainy days out of the year. So it's very functional. I don't have the money anymore to, well, if I could still have the money to like spend on like these expensive hats that I have, but um, it's been a long time and I kind of like curve that expenditure of those kind of things to like uh, help my friends. Um, uh, Seattle, where is like a public event when the slum comes out? <laughs> And it's not that much of a public event as it were, but like, but yet you can tell when you're talking to a Seattleite if they know what the term sunbreak means. Yeah, look at that term, because you will know that it's like, yeah, that doesn't happen much anywhere else, but it definitely happens in the Pacific Northwest of Oregon and, uh, and Washington, Washington, Washington. Um, so that's why I got this hat. Uh, but now... Uh, but this is the only thing that I have as a pirate costume, actually, just a hat. So it's like the rest of my outfit is just like I have this awesome T-shirt of like Lone Star Hero for Hire. Yeah, it looks yeah, it barf goes wild. It looks like a comic book cover, but it's like has all different like yeah, it's a little different. Like the the galaxy. What is that? I can read it upside down. Uh, the galaxy's uh, four most certified prints right here referring to like him. What is he saying? Um, oh, she's druid. She's druish. Yeah, so it's kind of awesome. Cool. Uh, and there's a self-care command. Don't forget self-care. I think I'm pretty good because I already took a break between uh, the case against anarchism and against um, reformism. And so and I feel actually pretty good. And I got a big drink of like water as well. And so I'm going to now transition back over and now we're going to read direct.